Why? When I see things in the church that are going on where uh, it scandalizes me, it makes me do two things. One, get down on my knees and make reparation for it, okay? Number two, pray for the conversion of our leaders that they will come back to their senses. I mean, I, I joke about having a PhD in common sense, and I say common sense ain't that common. But when you read the Gospels, it's there's no ambiguity in the Gospel. The ambiguity comes from man, okay, us, reading it with our glasses and saying, oh, well, what it really means is X, Y, and Z, when the Bible is very clear on its moral teachings. All right, Bishop Strickland. Absolutely, Terry. Let me, me just add to jump, that, jump. because Christ says it in the, in the gospel. Yeah. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. Anything else is of the evil one. Simple. Christ says that. Yep. We need to listen to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and be guided by the truth that he's revealed to us. All of this ambiguity and confusion is not of Christ. Amen. You know, I bring this story up because Alan, uh, Mr. Musk, who's the um, producer of the electric car, um, he uh, came out last week and said this that uh, we need to have more babies because the world's not going to exist if we don't start having more babies because our, as our population goes down, Japan lost 750,000 members in their country just last year. Spain, 180,000 because we're not having babies. Well, I just want to bring this up. I think it's clear. We sh the church should be proclaiming this, not some businessmen. So I, it just it, it's ironic that I hear a businessman say something that is prophetic, and we're being quiet about it. So here's the story. BlackRock, which is George Soros, the CEO of him, tells the uh, World Economic Forum last week that countries with declining populations will be the big winners, thanks to AI. Uh, and here's the question I have. Um, artificial intelligence, they're saying, yeah, let's get fewer people so that we can just let robots and software programs, you know, do the things we need to get done. If this is such a, a outrageous story about what I call the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I, that says, forget about the future. Let's just live like, you know, this is the only life we have. Let's make it as pleasurable as possible. Use AI, use artificial intelligence to make our life better. And who cares about who comes after us? Bishop Strickland, is that how you see that article? Because that's how I see it. It really, like you said, I mean, I, I love what you said, the the unholy trinity. Yeah. Me, myself, and I. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Making ourselves little gods mm -hmm. with a small g that isn't really divine at all, but acting as if we're God yep. and we will... Like you said, it just create a world yeah. <laughs> that supposedly gives us all the pleasures and all the joys and all the hope, all the things that we long for. Yeah. That in from the depths of our hearts, what the young people tell us mm. so often, it leaves them empty. Of course. And we older people that think we're so smart. And we've got it all figured out, and we'll leave God out of the picture. Um, the natural instinct of young people, so not all of them, some of them get carried away in the nihilism of our time, but yeah. many young people, thankfully, their instinct, God given sense of things kicks in. Yes. And they say, This leaves me empty. Exactly. This leaves me with no desire to go on. And sadly, too many of them don't. But um, it just reminds us once again from another angle of everything we talk about. It, it's essential that humanity wakes up to the truth of who we are. I mean, it, it, I'm reminded again of that conference you said where let's just be human. Yeah. We will never be human if we don't acknowledge God Amen. and acknowledge that we're created in his image and likeness. That's right. To leave God out of the picture, we will never be human, and we will be more and more inhuman. Inhuman. Um, the, the less God is in the, the world and in the culture, 
the more inhuman we are. And we see that. Yes. We see people doing things and getting away with things that would have been considered an atrocity years ago. And now it's like, oh, well, that's what they want to do, or that's they have the wealth to do that or the, the power to do that or whatever. Yeah. But that isn't being human. No. To be human is to be created in the image and likeness of God and to live that out and to know that this world is a pathway to the world that is our destiny. Uh, you know, we just have to continue to teach the truth Amen. and continue. Thankfully, I mean, on the positive side of all this, we've both seen there are many people that are waking up. That's right. There are people that are embracing the Catholic faith that have, as adults, have come to see how empty their lives are without God Amen. and gone on a quest. And if they honestly go on a quest to find the truth of faith, they're going to end up at the Catholic Church, not because of you or oh. me or any of us, hey. but because God's there. Amen. And because His Son established the truth that it's our obligation to proclaim. So <laughs> we need to stay strong, Amen. Stay, stay joyful in the Lord, but take very seriously these threats to yes. the truth that are very real. Yes. And like we're saying, the World Economic Forum thinks it can figure things out. They will leave the world devastated and empty uh, if if the if humanity doesn't wake up, and thankfully many are, oh yeah, many more need to wake up. Well, someone you tweeted about is a wake up call, and its name is Saint Athanasius from the fourth century. You tweeted this: "May we have a fourth century faith of Saint Athanasius in the twenty first century. He fought the heresy of Arianism, which denies the divinity of Christ." Let us fight the heresies of our day. The only thing I would change about that is I would just call it modernism because the Holy Father said that in 1910, that it's a, it's a combination of all the heresies. And we have a lot of them. I think Arianism is still up in the, it's still a problem uh, with especially the uh, Jehovah Witnesses. But um, this is, uh, uh, you said that the majority of the world was Arian. The, the majority opinion is not what the church is all about. So basically, my understanding, Bishop Strickland, correct me again, but most of the bishops at that time were Arian. Okay? I don't yeah. know what percentage, but over half. Is that fair? There, absolutely. There's a quote. I don't remember yeah. where it comes from, but mm -hmm. I remember a quote that said, humanity woke up or yeah. the world woke up and it was famous, Arian. Fair, famous quote. I've read the same one. So here's the point. You're saying that today we have to have the faith of St. Athanasius. Now, that man was exiled four or five times from what I've read in his life. He was persecuted by the church. Now, things got better for him at the end, but he still suffered. So what I'm getting the impression from this tweet is that Many of us might be called to suffer, not from the world so much, but even from the church for standing up for the faith, like maybe a Padre Peel did when he was reprimanded for uh, whatever accusations, false accusations. So is that the message you're wanting to give, that we have to be strong like Athanasius did in the fourth century? Absolutely. And really what comes to mind for me, Terry, is me. that we— when when the church ceases to be the church yeah when the church becomes of the in the world and of the world yeah. then those who are true believers yeah are going to be persecuted by both amen and that's what we're seeing yeah i mean we see threats from our national government to those who are orthodox believers yeah. that are are a threat yep. to um, what they're we're talking about. Right. Um, so I think we have to remember that if the church isn't being true to herself, yeah, we may be hated by the church, right? Because she's not being the church, right? But we've got to stay true to Christ. Yes, like going back to the gospel, live His commandments, remain in His love. And trust 
that ultimately Christ, Christus vincit. Yes. Christ conquered all that the world is throwing at us now. Christ has already conquered it. The sin and death that are rampant and many are latching on to as their religion. Um, we've just got to stay faithful. That final perseverance that we talk about and, and remain strong and to support each other. Thankfully, there are many faithful that have studied their way into the church, but we've got to stay strong for each other and with each other in the truth that Christ has shared with us, with his body and blood poured out for us. 